What's up guys, I just wanted to do a very quick video to just explain all the things I'm trying to answer everybody's questions on Twitter about, which of course is this Mercedes trick steering arrangement that I spotted very early this morning from the onboard cameras. Everybody of course has now seen that and is analyzing it, pouring over it, even the teams up and down the pit lane, desperate to find out exactly what's going on. Is it legal? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? So many questions. So I just thought I'd give a quick overview of what my understanding, and look, this is just my understanding, of course. I have no special insight here. I've no hotline to the team, but to me, it's a pretty clear system of what their intention is. The technicalities of exactly how they do it remain a bit of a mystery, but I'm gonna have my best guess at what I think could be happening. And I guess you guys can take it from there. So let's take a look at the front end of the car. Now we're talking about Lots of people are talking, and, and this is perhaps worth explaining as well, the idea of toe in and out. So the toe angle of the car, that is the angle that the wheels are pointing at. So if you think about the wheels going down a straight, pointing straight ahead, that would be zero degrees of toe angle. Typically what a racing car has, in fact most cars have, is a little bit of toe out. So you have a degree or so of the front wheels pointing out, at uh, all time, because for, for most cars, whatever you set your toe angle at, that's what it remains at. It does, a, it does change under suspension movement, that kind of thing, as the, uh, the, the suspension and the loading changes. But typically, once you set your car up with a toe angle, which you do on the flat patch inside the garage, under very kind of scientific strict conditions, it's measured to half a millimeter, if not more. So you set that up. Typically that would be something like a degree of toe out on the front end, on the rear end it's a tiny bit of toe in. But the idea behind having a bit of toe out on your front end of your car is that it actually helps to give you a better turn in process. When you get to a corner, it actually helps to uh, make the front end a little bit more stable, a little bit less aggressive if you like, when you put some input through the steering wheel to allow the car to turn into the corner better. So you need that, that's something that's been running on, on racing cars for many years. That's something that you need. What you don't need is that toe out heading along a straight because the negative side of that along a straight is that you've got your two front wheels pointing at this slightly slight toe out angle. That means they're not running parallel, they're not running, running straight ahead and therefore they're in a, just a tiny way scrubbing against, you imagine if you've got and when can I just how can I describe it? If you're putting your, your steering on full lock, or if you have an accident, this is an extreme version, if you have an accident and the car is damaged and you see a front wheel pointing in or out, but your driver still driving ahead, you see it scrubbing, don't you, down the road. Well, that's essentially what's happening with a little bit of toe out. Obviously, that's a massive exaggeration, but if you're driving in a straight line, the actual optimum setup would be dead ahead, zero degrees of toe out or toe in because then your wheel is rolling true, it has less rolling resistance, it also has a better aero profile than if it's sitting on an angle which has a wider um, uh, frontal area uh, to cut through the air. But also of course that scrubbing process is both wearing the tire in just a tiny way and it's also generating heat into the tire because it's scrubbing over the tarmac and it's not rolling free. Now, those things are things that you may not want going down a straight. You certainly don't want excessive tire wear and you don't want excessive drag on the car. So, if you can get to a straight line section of the racetrack and straighten up your wheels through that toe angle, there are potential benefits to that. And, and as I say, tire temperature being a major one as well. And that can work in both directions. You could, you could introduce a little bit of toe angle if you need to generate tire temperature. We know how critical tire temperatures are. But equally, if you're overheating tires, potentially at a certain racetrack or in certain conditions, you could go for that straighter angle to lessen the, 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 the sort of scrubbing effect and lessen the temperature being generated going down a straight. So that's why you would want to do this. There are a number of advantages, aero benefits, uh, rolling resistance benefits, tire wear and tire temperature benefits, if you can get the wheels rolling straight going along the straight of the circuit. Right, that explains why somebody would want to do that. How could you do it? Well, my best guess on this, we've seen Lewis Hamilton in the cockpit pulling the steering wheel back towards him as he gets onto a straight. And you can also see from that onboard, as he does that, that toe angle changes and the wheel just straightens up. 
It's a simultaneous movement between the steering wheel being pulled back and the wheel straightening up. Now, I'm going to guess that that is a mechanical system rather than anything that's hydraulically or electronically powered. If it's mechanical, you could even speculate, and this is what I'm doing, speculating, that the steering rack, which sits inside here, and let's just zoom in here. The steering rack, which sits inside the front of the chassis and the track rods, which are running alongside the lower wishbones here, the track rods here are connected into a steering rack right in the center of here. Now, if that steering column, which runs out of the steering rack and up the chassis towards the driver, of course, if as you pull back on that steering wheel, you're also effectively moving the steering rack by, you know, however much, however many millimeters or centimeters you need to move it. If that whole thing is actually moving on a slider, it would also have the effect of pulling these track rods. If the rack moves that way, you would essentially pull the track rods in, wouldn't you? The linkages on the end of here that connect to the steering rack could be configured in a way that as the steering rack moves, it pulls these two track rods in and therefore just straightens up the wheels by half a degree or a, or a degree. That could be the way that it works. And of course, when you push back on that steering wheel at the end of a straight, getting to the braking zone, it has the opposite effect. The steering rack could move further forwards again, connecting again to these, uh, these track rods and pushing them back out, resetting your toe angle back to the optimum uh, of a slight amount of toe out. So that's how I think it could be working. That's why I think it could be working. The next questions are gonna be around legality. Is the system legal? Does it break any of the technical regulations? And there are a couple of arguments around this. Is it, a, first of all, a movable aerodynamic device? And I think you can safely argue that it's not. Its primary function is not going to be the aero benefit from this. So I, I'm imagining that that will be the argument against that one. I don't think that's an issue. Then there are regulations about uh, suspension systems not being able to be adjusted whilst on the racetrack. That's the one that I guess a lot of people will question. My argument on this, and I'm sure the team's argument on this, will be that are they actually making suspension adjustments? Because the reality is they're making steering adjustments. And there is a distinct difference between the two. Yes, of course, you're adjusting in a way, you are adjusting the geometry of the car. But look, the geometry moves as the, the aero loading changes, as the weight transfer moves under braking. There are loads of things that actually apply to, to make tiny adjustments and tolerances in things. I think what's happening here is this movement, mechanical, let's say, done by the driver, so it's not automated, it's not powered, it's not active. This is a driver operated system, is adjusting the steering angle of the car. Now there is no specific rule that says you cannot adjust your toe angle uh, in this kind of way around a racetrack. And you've got to also argue that a team like Mercedes would not have gone to the lengths they've gone to to create and produce this system, put it on a car, having not gone over those regulations with a fine tooth comb, maybe even run this system by the FIA first and say, look, if we do this, is it going to be legal? They wouldn't have made a mistake like that. So you've got to argue, yes, it must be legal. Yes, they must have have found a way around all of these tiny little loopholes. And on that basis, I absolutely love it because it's been quite a few years since we've seen a, a major technical breakthrough innovation like this. And to come, and I mentioned this in the Mercedes video, to come in the final year of this period of regulations where next year we go to a completely new car. And look, a system like this could easily carry over into 2021. So it's not wasted development, but to see teams like Mercedes still pushing to the level they're going to, for me, is what Formula One is all about, and I absolutely love it. Will it remain on the car? The team have said they expect it to remain on the car. Will the other teams look at protesting? Quite possibly, they will argue different interpretation of the rules. Will it stay? Will it go? I mean, who knows? There are so many incidents like this in the past, and it probably depends an awful lot on results of the first few races, because if Mercedes end up walking away with this and dominating the early part of the season, perhaps there's an argument that the FIA or anybody can step in and go, look, we're not having this. This has got to change. <laughs> can anybody copy it? That's the other question. Yes, of course they can. And I'm sure, and I've seen this morning on the coverage, all the teams up and down the pit lane looking intently at the onboard footage of Lewis's car. Can they copy it? Absolutely, anybody can copy anything, but it's gonna cost a lot of money. It's not an easy thing to integrate because it's not that simple a system. 
But yes, other teams, if this is deemed legal, if it provides an obvious advantage, and given the fact that this could be something that could continue over into 2021 and beyond, yes, this will be something that all teams will be furiously looking into right now, up and down their factories all over the country and across the world, and expect this to be rolled out as long as it stays legal and is stayed allowed on this Mercedes car throughout 2020. There you go. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into what everybody's rattling on about today. Fascinating interpretation of the rules and innovation from the champions.